Seventh principle. The proper role of government is to protect equal rights, not provide equal things. Dennis, could you read that large portion, please? Constitutional author Clarence Carson. First, there is equality before the law. This means that every man's case is tried by the same law governing any particular case. Practically, it means that there are no different laws for different classes and orders of men as there were in ancient times. The definition of premeditated murder is the same for the millionaire as it is for the tramp. Corollary of this is that no classes are created or recognized by law. All right, so does this sound at all like our legal system today? Or, or the way that politicians address us? No, because they wouldn't divide people into classes or groups as they commonly do. Right. Uh, if, if they thought about it that way. It hasn't particularly gotten through to law, but if you take generally the way the government talks, uh, Congress and Senate, they're right. always talking about classes of people and why they need to do this or that has to do with a particular Well, can we, can we think of any law that does break us up into classes? There probably are. It really is one. Taxation, to be honest. What's that? Taxation. That's right. Well, taxation essentially taxes different classes of people at different rates, but I'm even thinking about the anti-discrimination laws. Essentially, they create protected classes. You know, classes which, if you're in this group, this group, this group, this group, and they keep on elongating the list, well then essentially you're protected. That's a class. That's a protected class. Now, what uh, Clarence Carson was saying is that uh, essentially you're not supposed to have classes recognized by the law. In other words, we are all created equal, we all have the same rights, that uh, premeditated murder is the same for a millionaire as it is for the tramp. So essentially, by creating classes and breaking us up into them, well, they're disenfranchising some and giving special protection to others. I mean, we even think today about uh, they're, they're adding the gender identity to the protected classes. Essentially, a protected class, if a wedding cake maker wants to, uh, you know, basically not provide a service for someone that they think uh, they don't want to support, well, if that group is in a protected class, all of a sudden that cake maker is in a whole lot of trouble because they went against one of those specially protected classes. And of course, this is one of our contemporary news stories that you can just go and look up and find this happens. Uh, he said, second, the Declaration refers to an equality of rights. Each man is equally entitled to his life with every other man. Each man has an equal title to God-given liberties along with every other. Now you may say that the Bible, surely God maybe wants to show some sort of favoritism to the poor. But Leviticus 19.5, just one of those Bible verses, says, Do not pervert justice. Do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great, but judge your neighbor fairly. So even the Lord who directs us personally uh, as a church and as individuals to look out for the poor, look after the widow and the orphan, etc. Under the law, God even said, do not show partiality to the poor or favoritism to the great, but judge each person equally. Judge your neighbor fairly.